But first up, he is the former governor of Arkansas, the author of God, Guns, Grits, and Gravy. Also, I believe he won eight states in 2008 in the Republican primary. Mike Huckabee's over here. Governor Mike Huckabee. How are you, Governor? Hey, Bill. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Uh, I know you're concerned about bad language. I tried to clean that up for uh, you tonight. I, I'm telling you, that could have been worse. It usually is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know what? I, I agree with you sometimes. I, I sometimes watch a sitcom at 8 o'clock at night, and it's like at 8 o'clock at night, it's like five minutes in, and it's three dick jokes. I'm not... <laughs> Sorry, I... <laughs> you know what I'm saying, sir. Yes. Uh, Unfortunately, I do. Yeah, yes. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, I, I read in your book, you said that, you know, you grew up in the South, and, and there was a certain decorum there. Men did not cuss in front of women. Typically, that was the case. There was a certain uh, sort of just unwritten code that people behaved with a level of respect for others, and, and I, I... But I'm they not had approved. slaves. Look, I'm not a... Uh, <laughs> Not in my life. No, no, not in your lifetime, but yeah. I, I just mean like... No. <laughs> I'm just saying... No, no, no. I'm just saying pri of the priorities, you know, I would rather have uh, uh, people who didn't have slaves and cussed. Yeah, but do you know what? Uh, what I think, people had a, a sense of respect for other people. I'm not a prude. I hear language all right. the time that I find that it's not the things I would say. Right hear it that's okay but here's what I feel like when we become coarse the coarseness of our language ends up becoming the attitude we have toward other people I agree and then people in become social media. brutal they become uh, very just mean and angry are you on Twitter I am it's yeah. nasty. You it is very you nasty. You read your feed, they must say terrible things. They say awful things. They say awful things about everybody. But, you know, free speech is a great thing, but responsible speech is a right. part of the balance of that. And I, I never want the government, I, I wouldn't even want anyone else right. shutting me I down agree. or shutting you down okay. or anyone else. But I'd like for people to self-police and to say, you know, I can say anything I want, but I'm going to say the things that are more wholesome, that are more edifying to the overall culture and society, that make us a more civil country rather than a less civil country. Okay, let's talk about your book. Now, okay. I remember you were on when you had your, your previous book, which was about, I mean, you used to be Chris Christie level, right? I did, I, I, right. I was a and big you, boy. You yeah. were a big boy, and, uh, <laughs> and you lost a lot of weight. I mean, you're not a rail, but you, you look healthy. <laughs> what? Neither am I. Well, I, mean, you know. I, I went through a process. Uh, By the way, you look healthier than people who do get skinny at your age. Well, thank you. You look healthy. At my age. Um, <laughs> Which is my age. But I mean, I lost 100 pounds back uh, in 2003. If I didn't, I think the doctor was quite right in saying, you know, I'd be entering the last decade of my life. So clearly I've outlived that. Uh, you know, I've had bouts with uh, weight gain, but I, I really believe that one of the most important things that we have to do is to take care of ourselves. and. And that's, again, it's a matter of personal responsibility. Okay. And I, I think but, that's... But your new book is yes. called God, Guns, Grits, and Gravy. Yes. In the South... Sounds like you flip-flopped on well, gravy. Well, no. <laughs> you got to understand, in the South, gravy is a beverage. Right. So, uh, <laughs> I know, but aren't you off the gravy? I mean, it's, yeah, wasn't that... Yeah, let me that... tell you, the, the term God, Guns, Grits, and Gravy is not a Southern recipe book. Right. It's really a depiction of the fact that there are bubbles of influence in places like New York, Washington, and Hollywood. And then there is a whole bunch of America in the middle, often called flyover country, but my term for it over the past few years, I said, when people would ask me where I live, I'd say, I live in the land of God, guns, grits, and gravy. And by yeah. that, I mean, it's a place, if somebody comes up to you and says, you know, I heard your mother is sick and in the hospital, I'm praying for her. Nobody is creeped out by that. Or if someone says, heard you just got a new weather, be 300 see, mad. They that everywhere. You don't think people pray in California? I think they do. If I lived in California, yeah, I'd be th praying th th a lot. This is a weird thing, because, <laughs> because I hear this all the time from yeah. social conservatives like yourself. You feel put upon. You feel like somehow the world is against you. You're 80% of the country. You have the vast majority, even in the blue states. Most people are religious. Most liberals are still follow a religion. Most Democrats do. I'm the only one sneering at you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is. I, I, so I don't, I, don't, I don't understand that persecution complex, except it's in Christian history. You love being persecuted. No, I think that there is... If you look at television shows and movies, you'll be hard-pressed to find a sitcom in which 
Christians, which do represent a significant part of the population. Significant, yeah. the vast majority. But, but you won't see them presented as normal, decent people. They're usually a charlatan. Well, They're often what? depicted. Yes, Bill. Christians are depicted as charlatans? You're yeah. thinking of Jews. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you're getting that from, but, but I have to tell you something. Okay. This may blow your mind. I made a little list of places I've traveled. Okay. Because I do stand up almost every weekend. I could, longer list, but I just picked out and see if you can tell why I picked these cities. This place I've been in the last two years Huntsville, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Let's not do this for everyone. <laughs> Memphis, Baton Rouge, Savannah. Topeka, Kansas, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Mobile, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, Kansas City, Charleston, West Virginia, Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Macon, Georgia. What do they all have in common? They probably loved you. They probably all had in a standing states room that only. you won in 2008. Wonderful people they are. Smart people they are. <laughs> Brilliant people. <laughs> but I See, I, you have this thing in your book, Bubbaville. You were just yeah. describing it. And I think I know Bubbaville better than you do. No, I, I think don't. I'm in more cities than you are. And I see in America, I don't think, I don't know if you know this America. I don't know if you know how actually people in the cities, yes, I'm sure if you go out in the deliverance area, that they're. <laughs> <laughs> but. They look, act, and laugh just like people everywhere else. This country is not Bubbaville anymore. No, but Bill, I think what I would say to you, there's a lot of people who will come to your show, whether it's in whatever city. There are certainly, there are liberals and there are all kinds of people in every city in America. There are conservatives. There are very strict fundamentalist Christians in Manhattan. I understand all that. I'm saying the prevailing worldview, and, and this is from going to New York every week for six and a half years, I, I told people when they said, are you going to do your to TV show? Yeah. Right. And they asked me, well, did I live there? I said, no, I'm not going to go there unless they let me duck hunt in Central Park, which I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's never going to happen. And my point being that... Why do you want to kill ducks? <laughs> really? They taste good, Bill. You kill things to eat them. You... Okay. All right. No, if you eat them. My point is there is a difference in the culture in those areas that really set the table for American culture and so much of the land well, that we call flyover world. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to ask the panel about this in a minute, about okay. this, the, this strategy, because Ted Cruz, who declared this week, uh, is trying to steal your lunch. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're the real pastor. You're a real pastor, right? I was 25 years ago. Okay. But I don't know I what mean, you were doing 25 years I ago. I know, but you now. are a, a Jesus enthusiast. I do, I do love Jesus. I don't, <laughs> okay. even, I don't right. even deny that. Right, in a yeah. way that he really can't compete with, and yet he declared. He, he could have picked his alma mater, Harvard, to declare, but that would send an awful message that he believes in reason and logic. Uh, <laughs> he declared at liberty he's going, he's going after your vote, and now I assume you're running for president and you're here. I will make a decision final sometime. You're running for president. Weeks. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean... No, I mean, winning eight states the last time you ran, that, that's a lot of states. I mean, a lot of people run and don't win any states. Yeah. So you have a, a place to, to, a springboard to go from. What do you think about Ted Cruz getting in? Is he a threat to you? Well, everybody's a threat to me. I think they should all drop out <laughs> and uh, let me have it to myself. But, you know, there you something. everybody <laughs> assumes that the only people who supported me eight years ago were the people who were religious. And the fact is, if they'd all really supported me, I'd have been the nominee. Right. The fact is, that a lot of the people who supported me were working class people, the kind of people I grew up with, because mm -hmm. that's where I came from. I am not blue blood. I am blue collar. Right. I'm the first male in my entire family lineage that ever graduated high school. You're from the same town as Bill Clinton. I am. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton and I are both from Hope, Arkansas. You could have flipped a coin and wound up in different parties. Could have. <laughs> but he moved away when he was like five years old, and I stayed. Because right. my family didn't have enough money to go, so there we were. Uh, he moved away from but a lot of things. The, the working class people, <laughs> that's where, <laughs> that's where okay. my support really came from. It was from truck drivers and baggage handlers and taxi drivers. And there's a loss of connection I, between the political class and I the people who are working. I wish we had more time but we to talk about why I don't think people like that should vote Republican. <laughs> but you make that case, and we'll see if they do. I think I can... Thank you, Governor. I appreciate Bill, you. You're brave you. to come here. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. Governor Mike Huckabee.